Well, for most... I assume a lot of people watching this do have some sort of, like, technical background, but I don't know how many people really know about, like, these internals of how a kernel works. So what mm -hmm. is the scheduler and what does that actually do? Sure, yeah. So when you think of a system, you, you what are you doing on your computer? You're on a web browser, you're on a word processor, you're doing a bunch of things at the same time. Mm -hmm. But um, the resources of your system are finite. You only have a certain number of cores or logical CPUs. And so the job of the scheduler is to decide who gets to run where and when. Um, so it's, you know, for example, if you have two cores and you have your web browser and your word processor, maybe the scheduler will say, oh, these guys both get to run in parallel on these two cores. But in reality, obviously, there's, there's way more threads than that in the system. So the scheduler decides who gets to run where. It's a complicated problem because you have to deal with with hardware issues. Like um, if you have a thread that's been running on a core, you probably want to keep it there if you can because it might have better cache locality. So its accesses will be faster because on the chip, there are these small, really hot caches that it wants to read from. Um, but if you keep it on the, the core for too long, then you might have another core that, that could have run that thread that's just sitting there idle, not doing anything. Um, so, you know, that's, that's sort of the problem space. Um, and then also with the default scheduler, especially EEVDF and the kernel, um, fairness is a big problem. So you want to give everybody kind of their fair slice, their fair share of CPU. So how do you kind of balance all of these heuristics uh, while also making it generally fair? Mm -hmm. That's kind of the goal. So the, the way the, the, from the documents that you sent me, previously up until what, 6.4, 6.6 6 something in that area, the mm -hmm. scheduler was the completely fair scheduler, the CFS scheduler, and now it's using this EEVDF, the earliest eligible virtual deadline first. So, right. which is a really long name. I, I'd see why you said <laughs> EEVDF. It's a lot easier to say. Um, but what is, like, I know obviously explaining the intricate details of how they are different would probably take you the entire episode, but at, like, a, a surface level, what is... Fun, are like fundamentally different about these two approaches? So yeah, that's a great question. I think it's if you get into the weeds, it definitely takes a while to explain, but I think you can you can think about the scheduler like this. So if you have one CPU and you have all these threads that want to run on it, the basic idea is you want to count how much time each thread has run on that CPU, and you want to give the thread that has run the least amount of time the next slice of time to run. And that's called V runtime, like virtual runtime. Um, and that value, so so if anybody's have ever heard of uh, thread weights or thread niceness, the way that you apply that is you scale how much runtime you accumulate as the thread runs depending on its weight. So it's inversely scaled. So if you have a really high weight, you divide how much time you're accumulating by that. And um, essentially that's kind of the that's kind of the idea. It's fair because you're giving whoever has run the least amount of time scaled by their weight um, the CPU next. So between, so that's really about bandwidth allocation, like who gets to run, how long do they get to run, et cetera. Um, but there's another problem in scheduling called interactivity where you wanna have, uh, you wanna be able to give applications that have like latency sensitive requirements. Like if you're gonna play a game and you're rendering some frame, uh, you probably need to render the frame quickly or else it's gonna look jittery. Same with like calls and everything like that. Mm -hmm. And so there's stuff built into, there was stuff built into CFS to enable kind of more interactive workloads to be to be given the CPU more more easily, mm -hmm. but the core difference with EVDF and CFS is that um, this deadline eligible deadline that you mentioned that's kind of where the interactivity comes along. Mm -hmm. And I'll try to give like a really brief overview. Um, I'm still confused by this, so if you're watching and you're confused, don't feel bad. But um, the idea is you have the same V runtime that you had with CFS, which is used again to count how much time you've run mm -hmm. for bandwidth to see who gets the CPU next. But in addition to that, you have what's called a deadline. And if, you're, if you want to run for, let's say, 20 milliseconds, your deadline would be however long you've run, your V runtime, plus 20 milliseconds. And the idea is the scheduler schedules whoever has the earliest deadline first. So if you have really short windows where you run, you only run for like 100 microseconds, your deadline is way sooner. So the scheduler is more likely to pick you first because it's not just how, how long you've run, but it's also like when is your deadline, so to speak. And that's kind of more the interactivity part of it. Um, there's a really good LWN article that, that explains it um, in maybe more intuitively than I am because the, uh, the LWN editor is, has been doing this for quite a while. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what I would say like the highest level explanation. So, 
I guess with CFS, so that came from a time... When was it? It was like 2006, 2007, somewhere in that range it was added to the kernel? Yeah, that's right. It was added... I think it was 2007, but it might have been 2006. But yeah, added a long time ago when, when the, the hardware landscape was very different. Um, when you had cores that were much more homogeneous. So you had, you know, quad core systems that each had the same cache topology. You didn't have as many NUMA machines. Um, and migrations were usually more expensive because the cores were spaced further apart. And so um, you mentioned this project Skedext, which uh, which allows you. I'm sure you're going to go into this a little Definitely, bit, but yeah. it allows you. Yeah, um, the TLDR is yeah. The, CFS was in a very different time, in my opinion. Like hardware is way more um, eclectic, let's say, than it used to be. Mm -hmm. So scheduling is more important than it used to be as well. Right. And I guess the kinds of workloads that we do on Linux nowadays are also fairly different as well. Like you know. Just a common example, like gaming, for example, like that wasn't really a, a use case for Linux back in 2006. There was, a, you know, the, a couple of open source games, but, you know, not like we have today. Right. No, it was a meme back in 2006. And now it's like, like we have the Linux Steam Deck. So Steam is like dead serious about Linux on uh, gaming on Linux. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's 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 a big scheduling problem. Um, there are people that are working on SCEDX that are looking closely at that problem specifically as well. And um, to give you maybe a concrete example, so um, I don't know if, if you've ever played Factorio or if any of your viewers have ever played Factorio, but um, it's a game where you have to build this huge factory that does all this stuff in parallel. So it's a very like parallel heavy game where you have to have a lot of computing power. And um, I think it was a non-tech did a benchmark where he ran on the uh, the 7950XD as, as I think the, the AMD CPU that has... Um, it's kind of wild. It has a V. It has a 3D V cache sitting on top of one of its two uh, L3 caches. So if you imagine there's two different groups of cores on the CPU, there's a cache sitting on top of one of them, which means that that set of cores has better memory look uh, memory access. There's more cache around it, but it has um, it's it has to th uh, throttle itself more often because heat is actually trapped by that cache. So. It's a really crazy scheduling problem where like on the one hand you have better locality and the other you have better CPU. And on Windows it ran like way, way better than on Linux because um, you know the, the Windows scheduler is kind of, I guess it was more amenable to this type of workload. And so that's the kind of thing, that's an example of the kind of thing that we can, we can do better um, in the modern age.